Have you ever wondered what keeps athletes going in the toughest of marathons or how climbers conquer those relentless ascents? It all boils down to muscular endurance. Today we're exploring what muscular endurance really means and unlocking the secrets to improving yours. Hey guys, welcome back to the Active Way channel, your go-to source for cutting edge fitness insights. If you're excited about fitness and fitness technology, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to stay up to date with all of our latest content. Today we're diving into the world of muscular endurance, what it is and how can you improve it with your training. Before we start, I want to differentiate between muscular endurance and aerobic endurance. Muscular endurance refers to the ability of a muscle or a group of muscles to sustain repeated contractions against a resistance for an extended period of time. Aerobic endurance, also known as cardiovascular or cardiorespiratory endurance, is the ability of the heart and lungs and blood vessels to deliver oxygen to the body's tissues during sustained physical activity. For this video, we're going to solely focus on muscular endurance, so let's talk about what that means. Muscular endurance really includes many different facets, so let's go over them. First, we have muscle fiber fiber composition. Muscular endurance is closely related to the proportion of type 1 muscle fibers in the muscle. These fibers are more efficient at using oxygen to generate more fuel, which we call ATP in the muscle, for continuous extended muscle contractions over a long period of time. They fire more slowly than fast twitched or type 2 muscle fibers, but they can keep going for a long time before they're fatigued. Obviously, this makes them ideal for endurance sports. Type 2 muscle fibers are fibers that are used for short, intense bursts of power like sprinting. They fatigue more quickly, but they are important in overall muscle function, and they do contribute to performance and activities that require both strength and endurance. Next, we look at efficiency in aerobic and anaerobic metabolism. Aerobic metabolism involves the use of oxygen to adequately meet energy demands during exercise. Aerobic metabolism fuels most of the sustained lower intensity activities that we do. It's efficient and it uses carbohydrates, fats, and sometimes proteins to produce ATP. Anaerobic metabolism is used during high intensity activities that cannot be sustained for a long period. Things like heavy lifting or sprinting. This process occurs without oxygen and primarily uses carbohydrates for energy. While it's faster at generating ATP compared to aerobic metabolism, it's less efficient and produces lactate, which can lead to muscle fatigue. Next, we look at the muscle's capacity for recovery. The ability of muscles to recover from fatigue is really crucial in muscular endurance. This involves the removal and recycling of metabolic byproducts, replenishment of energy stores like glycogen, and repair of any muscle tissue damage. Recovery processes are influenced by a variety of factors, including nutrition, hydration, rest, and active recovery. Then we have energy production pathways, and specifically two that we're going to talk about. The electron transport train, or ETC, and the TCA cycle, or we'll call the Krebs cycle. The Krebs cycle is a series of chemical reactions used by all aerobic organisms to generate energy. It takes place in the mitochondria where it oxidizes acetyl-CoA derived from carbohydrates, fats, and proteins into carbon dioxide and transfers energy to the electron transport chain. The ETC is a series of complexes that transfer electrons from electron donors to electron acceptors via what's called redox reactions. This electron transfer via protein complexes in the ETC ETC is coupled with the transfer of protons or H plus ions across the mitochondrial membrane, creating a proton gradient that leads to the synthesis of ATP. I know that all sounds very complicated, but the efficiency of the TCA cycle and the ETC cycle in muscles directly impacts the ability to maintain endurance activities, and they play a critical role in sustained energy production. So you can see that muscular endurance is a complex trait influenced by muscle fiber composition, the ability to utilize both aerobic and anaerobic energy systems, the muscles recovery capacity, and the efficiency of critical energy production pathways within the muscle. So how does muscular endurance improve in your body and how does training influence this? When muscular endurance improves, several physiological changes and adaptations occur within the body, reflecting enhanced efficiency and capacity in muscle function. Improved muscular endurance leads to an increase in capillary density around the muscle fibers. More capillaries enhance the delivery of oxygen and nutrients to the muscles and leads to more efficient removal of waste products. This facilitates longer periods of exercise with reduced fatigue. Endurance training stimulates the growth of new capillaries and muscle tissues. Exercises like cycling, running, and swimming, which involve sustained muscle activity, increase the demand for oxygen and nutrients in the muscle cells. This demand prompts the formation of more capillaries around the muscle fibers, improving the supply of oxygen and removal of waste products. There is an increase in both the number and efficiency of mitochondria within the muscle cells. Mitochondria are responsible for aerobic energy production, and their enhancement means that muscles can generate more ATP through aerobic metabolism. This increase in aerobic capacity is crucial for sustaining longer periods of physical activity. Endurance exercises, a especially those that are aerobic in nature, trigger the proliferation of mitochondria in the muscle cells. This increase in the number and efficiency of mitochondria allows muscles to generate more ATP through aerobic metabolism, enhancing the ability to sustain activity for longer periods of time. With improved endurance, there's often a shift in muscle fiber type composition. While the conversion of fiber types is still a subject of debate, what is clear is that muscle fibers become more efficient at utilizing oxygen. This is primarily due to adaptations in slow twitch or those type 1 muscle fibers, which are more 
suited for endurance activities. Regular endurance training can induce biochemical and structural changes in muscle fibers, particularly in these type 1 muscle fibers. These changes make the fibers more efficient at using oxygen. Muscles adapt by storing more glycogen, which serves as a readily available energy source during prolonged activities. This increased storage capacity can delay the onset of fatigue and enhance endurance performance. Endurance training enhances the muscle's ability to store glycogen. This adaptation is achieved through a combination of prolonged regular training and appropriate nutrition, especially post-exercise carbohydrate intake. The increased glycogen reserves allow muscles to work longer before becoming fatigued. With better endurance, the body becomes more efficient at clearing lactate, which is a byproduct of anaerobic metabolism. An increased lactate threshold means that an individual can perform at a higher intensity for a longer period before lactate begins to accumulate in the muscles. Training that involves sustained efforts at moderate to high intensity, such as interval training, can increase the body's ability to clear lactate from the muscles. This adaptation allows a person to maintain higher intensities of exercise before experiencing fatigue due to lactate accumulation. Improvements in the cardiovascular system, including heart function and blood flow, contribute to muscular endurance. The body becomes more efficient at transporting and utilizing oxygen, which is crucial for sustained muscular activity. Aerobic endurance training, like running or swimming, improves cardiovascular function, leading to better blood flow and increased oxygen delivery to muscles. So improved heart strength and efficiency contribute to this process. There's an upregulation of enzymes involved in energy production, especially those in the aerobic energy pathways. This leads to more efficient energy production within the muscles. Endurance training stimulates an increase in the activity of enzymes involved in energy production, particularly in aerobic pathways. This increase is a response to the muscle's demand for more efficient energy production during prolonged exercise. Improvement in the coordination between nerves and muscles can occur, leading to more efficient muscle contractions and reduce energy expenditure for the same amount of work. Regular training leads to improvement in the coordination between nerves and muscles. Exercises that require precise movement patterns like rowing or swimming are particularly effective at enhancing neuromuscular efficiency. With regular endurance training, muscles adapt to become more resistant to fatigue. The recovery processes after exercise also become more efficient, allowing for quicker recovery between training sessions or during intermittent periods of endurance activities. Endurance training induces adaptations that improve a muscle's resistance to fatigue and enhance recovery processes. Training modalities like long, slow runs or rides, as well as interval training, help condition muscles to become more fatigue resistant and recover faster. You can see that improvement in muscular endurance involves a comprehensive adaptation across various systems in the body, enhancing the muscle's ability to sustain prolonged activity with greater efficiency and reduced fatigue. That wraps up our exploration into muscular endurance. If you guys have any questions or want to share your own experiences, drop them in the comments below. We love hearing from you guys. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.